Right then, it's time for another huge debate and today it's all about the man that everyone is speaking about at the minute. Positive or negative, everyone's got an opinion on him and it's Wayne Rooney. I've got Matt Burgess with me, I've got Greg from Squawker and of course I've got Adam McCola as well. So Adam, we'll start with you. Are people over exaggerating a little bit with Wayne Rooney and can he still do a job up top at the, uh. at the top of the team? In striker position, you know, he's, he's, he's nearly our record goal scorer, let's not forget. Listen, um, Captain Wayne Rooney. Uh, the, I would put him up front. That's the only place I think he can play up now. He's either 10 or 9, but he's not the best player that we have in either of those positions, is he? I don't think he's better than Zlatan in number 9. I don't think he's better than Mkhitaryan or Matter in number 10. At the moment, given his abilities as they are, and the way he's been playing over the last few years. I don't think that's the case. So I would use him. We've seen Marcus Rashford is starting to play out wide. We've seen Marshall been playing out wide. And we may even possibly go to a two up front. So then that would allow us to play Wayne Rooney, I think, just as backup to Zlatan. He isn't going to play every single game. Um, and I think it's time to to ease Wayne Rooney out of... Out of... Um, the starting lineup week in, week out, but also with a, in the same way we kind of did with Giggs and Rio and Carrick to a certain extent, where they're still useful to your team, you manage them so that they are still fit when you need them for a big game or you need them for this game. You still need Wayne Rooney's leadership and his experience around the dressing room. So when I'm saying drop Wayne Rooney, I'm not saying let's get him home, drawn and quartered or, you know, Wayne Rooney's the problem with the world and all that but he is a problem um and i think it's time that we we got rid of that out of the starting lineup week in week out but i think the only position he can play now is up front that's jose's already said he's not a six he's not an eight he's not a four we all know he's not that listening to danny murphy and trevor sinclair and all that saying let's put him there <laughs> have you seen him passing the ball like it's so painful to see he can't control the ball at times he can't pass and I'm starting to feel sorry for him. Like, a few weeks ago, I was, or months or whatever, I was saying Wayne Rooney needs to get dropped, Wayne Rooney needs to get dropped. And I was kind of, on, not on my own, but I was in the minority. And now that everyone's starting to see it, it's kind of like I feel to protect Rooney again. <laughs> like, I just feel sorry for him. But it is true. Um, time's ticking and time is almost up. Time catches them all, unfortunately. I feel like pundits eventually are going to start asking him to be playing as a sweeper keeper just so he stays on the bloody <laughs> team. He keeps just getting deeper and deeper on the uh, on the well, starting Luke eleven. So, so uh, Danny Murphy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You never know. Wayne Rooney bombing down that left hand side at left back. We'll see. Greg from Squawker is here as well, uh, looking doing? a bit like a convict in his orange t-shirt. <laughs> uh, Greg, do you still think that Wayne Rooney can do a job up top specifically in the team? Yeah, um, I, I kind of agree with Adam, though, that maybe, not maybe, he shouldn't be United's main man, but, I mean, United are dysfunctional across the park. Mourinho, I don't know what Mourinho's doing with United at the moment. They look undercoached, they don't like they've got a plan, they look like a team without a system waiting on their individuals to matter. And to be fair to Wayne Rooney, of all the players, he's one of the ones that actually has delivered. If it's a dysfunctional team, he's a bit of a dysfunctional player these days, but he's got two assists, he's got a goal, he was, you know, he, got, he had the moments arguably, that made those... Arguably three assists as well. Arguably, 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 three assists. And I think we saw against Watford, Ibrahimovic didn't have the best time of it. And I mean, I know it's a bit of a cliche saying, oh, he's going to struggle in England against some big centre centre backs. But that actually did happen at Watford. He didn't look too comfortable up against that back three. And I wonder if, if Mourinho has, has a plan B to go up top, if you played two strikers, those two strikers I'd want to see will be Marcus Rashford and Wayne Rooney, which might sound a bit like, but I don't, I don't, I don't rate Rooney as the poacher. I still think he has to be the guy behind him. And I think you look at his, his uh, combinations in the past with players like Hernandez, players like uh, Welbeck as well. I think he's, he does like having a fast man in front of him to find with his passes, which can be overhit, which can be clumsy. But as history has shown, if he's going to be paired with anyone, it's a fast striker who can do a bit of poaching as well. That's, that's what you need to get the best out of Rooney as that kind of second striker. So if we're going to play him up front, it should be as like an alternative to Zlatan in a front two with Marcus Rashford for me. So, Matt, we're talking about Wayne Rooney, a man who's very, very close to becoming Manchester United's record goal scorer of all time. We've seen him in the past do amazing things in the position. Do you think that if we carry on playing him as a striker up top in the pitch, maybe even just behind the striker, do you think eventually it's going to come good? 
It should do, considering his track record. But I think you've just got to look at it as he's playing at the moment and assess it like you would with any player. If a player was putting in poorish performances, you'd start to question whether they would have a place in the starting eleven. I think because he's the captain and because of his, his past record of scoring goals and creating goals and everything, he's given almost like this green light into the starting eleven, even when he's not at his absolute best. Uh, I'm a big fan of Wayne Rooney. I've always been a fan of Wayne Rooney, but I don't. For me, I don't know if dropping him would be the best thing to do because it could almost have a detrimental effect, factor in making play worse when he comes back into the team, or if just keep playing him and then you're running the risk of that he just doesn't start to improve. I mean, he has picked up those assists. He had got that goal against Bournemouth, but I honestly don't really know <laughs> what the best way to deal with Wayne Rooney is. I mean, Adam, you've, you, you know, you mentioned already that uh, he's not looking the same player when he's up there at the top of the pitch. So maybe is it potentially time to bring him back, put him in midfield? For me, he, start, he, he ended the season quite well last year when he was playing there in midfield. Do you disagree? Do you agree? Oh! <laughs> he's not a midfielder, man. This what does my head in. Like, we've, seen it. we've tried to put him there so many times. It doesn't work. England, I think, may have done it. It doesn't work. Like, yeah, they we've, got, we've got Bastian Schweinsteiger who can't get into our squad and we want to put Wayne Rooney in midfield. Are you being serious? Really? An actual central I, midfielder. I, I just, I, I an just actual asked the central questions. midfielder can't get into our squad. But hold on. Wayne Rooney's playing shit up front. So let's stick him in midfield because, yeah. because midfield isn't the most important part of a team, is it? Mm. Bloody hell, man. We've seen his passing. Crosses over hit. Crosses under hit. Short passes. I saw one pass where he nearly took off Bailey's foot with it. I think it was Bailey. It was about five yards away from him and he just <laughs> roasted it at him like, yeah, where's your touch? And it's like, <laughs> there's no subtlety in his play anymore. Yeah. It's none definitely. of those taking this, putting a little spin on the ball and making it cut back into a player's path. Everything seems to just be led and footed. And, oh, man, it's painful to watch. It is painful to watch. He's not a midfielder. Gary, Gary, he's not a midfielder. Stop listening to Danny Murphy. <laughs> don't don't call Matt. me Gary. Uh, Matt, Matt. So uh, we've obviously know what Adam thinks about putting Wayne Rooney in midfield. What do you say to the idea of him becoming a centre mid? Um, much of the same opinion. I think if you've got like a World Cup winner in Bastian Schweinsteiger, who when fit last season didn't have that bad of a season, he put in some decent performances in midfield. You've got Schneidlin, you've got Herrera, you've got Paul Pogba. We've got all these central midfielders, and uh, Wayne Rooney isn't better than any of them in central midfield. So I don't see why he should be played there. I think if you're going to play him, then you're playing him as a striker. Um, and I don't know if you should just be trying to accommodate him into the starting eleven just because it's Wayne Rooney. I think if he's not playing well and if it isn't the right time to be playing him, then he shouldn't be played in a role just so that he's on the pitch. Uh, Greg, what are you saying then? Rooney in midfield, do you like it? Do you not like it? Oh, no, I don't like it. He, he's like an object of blunt trauma these days. I, I, don't, I don't got it completely right about his lack of like nuance, lack of, lack of subtlety. And in Paul Pogba, you've got a player full of subtlety, full of beautiful, brilliant little bits of footwork and all that. And if you didn't sign Paul Pogba, you could you could maybe have Rooney in like a free role in a midfield three doing much more rudimentary things. But you've got Paul Pogba. You can't play Paul Pogba and Wayne Rooney in a midfield because they both need at least two players to really get the best out of them doing their work for them. Pogba, he, he deserves the freedom because of what he can create with it. Rooney just needs the freedom because he hasn't got the positional discipline to do it otherwise. But I mean... He's completing less than I think it's about 60 passes per game, which you want you want your elite midfielders to com be completing and seeing more of the ball than that because that, you know United want to be getting to the top of the Premier League, getting back into Europe, doing all the business there. But out on the wings, that also counts as a midfield position. So I mean, I, in the Manchester derby, he wasn't the best player on the pitch. He didn't pull up any trees, but he certainly wasn't one of United's worst players, and he didn't actually do that much with the ball besides obviously crossing it. I thought his his best work in the derby came almost playing as like a bad version of the old Rooney we used to see when he was kind of balancing out Ronaldo's freedom from the left-hand side, but he was on the right in that 4-3-3, and he was running at people, trying to win the ball, basically just getting stuck in rather than doing something, something a bit more clever, a bit more fancy, and maybe that's what Rooney is now. He's just a you know an engine. He's just a bit of an engine stick out there. Not a great engine, an engine with so many of its pistons broken, and it's kind of not really kind of running at the speed it used to do, but that's still probably the best thing he brings to the team, which is just like endless Greg, running. So, Greg, don't you think, like, and Matt, and Gaz, Gary, don't you think <laughs> like Wayne Rooney would offer us so much more if we, if we like, 
picked and choose when he played. If we got him fit, I, I know it's weird with Rooney because he like normally he needs a run of games to get himself going. So it's mm. weird with him. But do you think if we just managed his game time, we would then get the best out of him? Playing him in every game and then he's playing poorly. The pressure's building. The headlines are building. Everything's building up around Wayne Rooney. Mm. Mm. Our, our, our results aren't going right. So is it fair on him to just keep playing him through this form as well? Like, it, Obviously, from a perspective of the team, we, we think we should take him out because he's better for the team. But do you think it's better for Wayne Rooney as well that he's not constantly played for this bad form? Well, that, that's what I was going think... to ask you guys then as well, whether you think that he should go straight into a, a more of a squad role now. I mean, you've made it evident that probably you don't think he's the best striker at the club. You made it evident that you don't think he's the best central midfielder at the club. So do you think that it's better, like Adam says, for himself? What do you think is better mainly for the team if we just drop him to the bench? Well, I mean, I, I think ideally it, that would work and it would be like, almost like a Gary Neville type thing where he was the captain, but he wasn't playing every week uh, type mm-hmm. thing. And again, like Giggs and Skull was a great example of you know players that were there when United needed them, but they didn't play every single week. And we all, we all talk about Wayne Rooney's a 30-year-old with the body of a 35-year-old because he's done so much football. But what, what differentiates Rooney from Skulls from Giggs is I don't quite think he's got that technical foundation that those two guys had. They were, I mean, pe- people think of like Skulls and, and Giggs as quite, quite old school players now, but even in the 90s when they were riding over challenges and that kind of stuff, there was still like a technical foundation to what they did. Like they, they, they were playmakers, they were flair players, but they weren't fussy. There was like a kind of a like workmanlikeness about them, which wasn't a criticism. Like they just got on with it, they made things happen. Whereas Rooney, he's, he's still, he's, he's a huff and puff player. He, and that's... That's why I think off the bench, maybe come off the bench to play that wing role we've just talked about, where he's going to run at people and just cause problems with his aggression rather than his ability. But, I mean, the problem with that is Rooney wants to play every single game. I, he, It's not a case of, you know, the managers playing him when he doesn't want to play. The problem with Rooney is he doesn't know what's best for himself. So, I mean, you'd hope a manager like Mourinho, if that's what he wants to do, has the force of personality to convince him otherwise. But from everything we know about him playing through injury, I mean, in that game against Bayern Munich um, under Fergie, I think it was 2011, I think, I can't remember. Um, but he, apparently he came into the into the stadium on crutches and then was out on the pitch having some um, painkiller injections in his foot. I mean, this is a guy who, who, who's destroying himself to play football and he always has done. That's, that's what he's about. So... I don't know. I, I, ideally, that's what you'd do, but I don't think Rooney would would, would stand for it, to be honest with you. Uh, it's quite admirable, isn't it, in a way? Destroying mm. himself to play mm. football over mm. the years, but it's had a negative impact on his career maybe this Definitely. late on. Uh, Matt, do you reckon uh, the next move for Wayne Rooney is to the bench, becoming more of a squad player? And like McCullough says as well, being used in certain games where he'd be a little bit more useful, really. No, I agree. And I think you saw it, especially under Ferguson, with the likes of Fletcher or with Ajisung Park or even with Giggs and Skulls towards the end of the career. He would essentially take them to one side and say, oh, look, we've got Chelsea in a couple of weeks. You need to get yourself ready for that game. Uh, Get yourself in the right mindset. Work on certain things in training to build yourself up so that he's ready to be coming in and being able to play in that game to the best of his ability. I think the problem with Wayne Rooney is that his track record suggested that he needs those run of games so that he is up to match form, which I think is probably a factor in why managers like Van Gaal, Moyes and now Mourinho are still playing him when he's not playing brilliantly. But I think because he's had so much experience and because he's been there, done it, won everything effectively, he is such an invaluable part of the squad to be around the the younger players that we've got. You look at Rashford, you look at Marshall. The whole reason why we brought in Zlatan, arguably, is because we needed that quality up front and we needed that leadership. Well, with someone like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, with someone like a Wayne Rooney, you've got those leaders for those younger players. And I still mm-hmm. think there is a role for Wayne Rooney at Man United. But I think to be a squad player... It sounds harsh to call it that because it almost sounds like you're not going to be using him at all. But I think to use him in the games that you could really see a, a player like Wayne Rooney benefit in the team, I think that would be the best way forward. I think a lot more harsh than a squad player as well is the fourth possibility, which is that we could actually potentially get rid of him as soon as we possibly can, send him to another club, send him to China, send him to America maybe. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that that would be uh, a poor move on United's uh, behalf? Do you think that Wayne Rooney is definitely worth keeping in the squad at least? Greg, tell me. Um, I think I almost felt that, that that ship hasn't sailed, but I think Fergie got it absolutely spot on. When he was leaving the club, he you know he, he tried to poison the well a bit and make sure that Rooney was going to, going to have to leave. He saw what was going to happen to him. He saw that he'd like, mm. kind of run out of effectiveness. 
I think I think Fergie was spot on. He, he probably should have been sold for as much money as we got in 2013, and then maybe now he'd be Chelsea's problem. I don't know, but um, he, he is what he is now, and with the money we're paying him, I, I, you know, you could probably spend that on on other players. Um, but it's just who's going to pick up that wage bill. Everyone says China, but uh, is, will a Chinese club actually stump up the money? And they're going to have to pay more than what he's on now because I'm not sure Rooney quite fancies going Wayne to Rooney China's place. I can't see. China. I can't see him wanting to go to no. China. No, Wayne Rooney no. can barely speak English. Never mind bloody <laughs> Chinese. He's not going to do that. Uh, well, one, bit, Adam... one thing I would say is it does feel like he's a bit of a scapegoat, though. I mean, if you take Rooney out of the club now, it's not going to fit off, fix half of the problems that are actually going on in the team, on the pitch, in the dressing room. So Yeah, I think there's a lot of know. players who need to step up as well as the fact that Wayne Rooney's playing poorly. I think there's a lot of players who aren't playing to their best <laughs> ability. So, uh, Adam, uh, do you disagree then with the with what a, a few people are shouting? Not uh, not most, but a few people saying get rid of him. Um, that's. I think that decision ultimately will come down to Wayne Rooney and how, if he is... If he becomes more of a squad player or a team player, I think the reaction of Wayne Rooney will ultimately decide whether he's here for another two or three years or whether he leaves next summer. Um, because if Wayne Rooney reacts badly to it and he sort of demands that he starts and, and, and all these kind of things like he could three or four or five years ago when he was one of the best players at the club, then I think that could cause issues in the team and you don't want that around the team. But if Wayne Rooney now... If Wayne Rooney is happy to do a Ryan Giggs, be the experienced figure around the team, play the odd game here and there, be a squad player, obviously that doesn't mean he's, he's never going to play a run of games for United again, but just he shouldn't he shouldn't be the first name on a team sheet like he usually is. Um, then I think, yeah, it just depends on him. How does he react? Does he get pissed off with Jose Mourinho? Does he get pissed off with sitting on the bench? Does he still think he, he is the best at the top of the game like he was in the past. Does he think it's a tactical thing that's making him play badly at the moment? You don't really know how Wayne Rooney is thinking. And I think what Wayne Rooney thinks of the decision to put him on the bench or put him as a squad player will ultimately decide whether he leaves the club or not. I do think Jose Mourinho will eventually, at least I hope, eventually make that decision. But as Greg said, Wayne Rooney is not the only problem. I do not want Wayne Rooney forced out of the club. I do not think we should sell Wayne Rooney straight away. I do not think Wayne Rooney is the one problem at the club. He is part of the problem. We're still hanging on to Wayne Rooney. We're still hoping for the best from him. And we can't get that anymore. You're not going to get that from Wayne Rooney. Ryan Giggs eventually stopped flying down the wing. It happens. And unfortunately, it's happening with Wayne Rooney. Um, but we just got to manage him correctly. Give him some respect as well that he deserves. I know a lot of people will say, oh, You've not been disrespect. You've been disrespecting him, saying he deserves to be dropped and stuff. But that's, that's not, not disrespect. That's just no. from what I've been. Seeing it's for the best. It's for the best for Wayne Rooney, though. That's the thing. It's like it's recognizing that you've got a good player who isn't playing that well and is at the twilight of his career. And game management could actually make him play an awful lot longer for us. I'm surprised mm. he didn't retire from international football as well. And yeah. I think that could be his problem. That he's had injuries in the past. That. He's forced himself back from for club and country, and they've just affected his his body. Um, he's put himself through a lot, and the way the way he played as well, always a hundred miles per hour, always on the edge, always flying into tackles, covering every blade of grass. It's hard to do that for long, and when yeah, you lose yeah. that drive, then you've lost Wayne Rooney because Wayne Rooney without that drive isn't Wayne Rooney, man. I agree, I, agree with, I agree with what you guys have, uh, have all said, to be honest, that maybe it's time for him just to be used sparingly in certain games as we get to the end of his career. And I completely agree that that's not disrespectful in any way. What Matt says there, it is the best thing for Wayne Rooney. And with Wayne Rooney, there is no doubt we're talking about one of the best players to ever play for Manchester United. Whether you think he's a Man United legend or not, based on, obviously, off-the-field things, you can never doubt the quality that he did have at one point. And he does still, uh, in my opinion, have a lot to offer United but the way that we keep shoehorning into the team is what is frustrating fans. Guys, get in your comments below. Give us your opinions on Wayne Rooney. Uh, we will get in the comments and reply to a few of you guys and read all your comments. Uh, give this a like. Give us a subscribe as well. We recently passed over 300,000 subscribers, which is nice, isn't it? Let's see if we can get to 400,000 very, very soon. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, Greg, Matt and Adam. Nice one, boys. See you next time. Later. Bye, see you.